Jared Poland Frono's photo.com and this video is all about your best sports photos ever. Now I asked you to post your photos over there on Facebook and I had 1363 comments come in which means that the majority of those were photos that you guys posted and I've been trying to find the best way to critique them and I'm gonna to get to that in just a second. But I wanna let you know that the green shirts are in stock over at the store at store.fronosphoto.com so you can be ready for St. Patrick's Day and you can drink raw the green beer or be like a leprechaun or whatever. That's over at the store right now. But what I wanna do is go through the images. The best way that I was going, the one way I was gonna do it, I was gonna pull images out. That means I had to go through like 1,500 of them and put the people's names to it. And that's just not gonna work. So I'm gonna go from the top. I'm gonna to work my way down as far as I can and point out images that I really do like, images that grab me, and then maybe critique some images that could be a little better. So let's go in to these images and see what we have. So, here we go. We'll skip past the two images of mine. We've got this one right here. Grizzly Cubs was the most likes on there. And I know what happens is the, the quicker that somebody posts and the more likes they get earlier, the more probability that somebody's gonna see their pictures. Now, I like this. If th This is a, like, a live action shot. Um, and one more, love the idea. Oh, okay, thank you, Derek. Um, it's a great shot for the players coming out of this thing busting through the background doesn't distract me uh what would be really cool i love the smoke that's coming what would be really cool stadium in the background lights in the background of course you can't you can't do that it's not your fault that that's not there it's a great picture i like it i would pump up the contrast a little bit here because it looks like the exposure may have been off to do it uh, in the first place but looks good nice shot scrolling down people like this one as well uh it's a very tight shot I'm going to say cropped. I j it, it would take some tremendous concentration to get this framed this way. And it leads me, I know Facebook does a terrible job with images, but it just leads me to believe that this is highly cropped to get this. Now there's nothing wrong with doing that if that's the composition that you saw in your head. That's perfectly fine. It's just that in a photo story, this image would be awesome on its own. It's okay, I, you know, I would like to see maybe the trampoline or more of the things going on in the background, but as the image stands itself, yes, it's a nice moment captured, but I don't have any idea about the height or the distance or whatever crazy things may be in there. Um, that's all I'm getting out of that. That's, that's why I point that out. Um, yeah, so let's go, let's keep going. So people like the splatter shot. I'm going to go through quicker after we get this. The splatter shot's fine. I actually don't know what's in focus. I know that this is in sharp, sharp focus over here, and then this isn't. I I've never done paintball. I think it would be cool to do, to actually play and try to photograph. You know, this is cool, and obviously getting the paint splatter is good and all and well and good. It just it doesn't do it for me. Now, it may do it for the paintball enthusiasts out there because this must be something extreme that doesn't happen all the time. But that's just my feeling on that. This is a nice dirt bike photo. Nice contrast. Nice, I mean, throwing a ton of sand up on the edges there. So that looks good. Nice and good. Now this is, again, something that has to be highly cropped. I just... I, I just say that because look at the way that the, the, the noise... The, the way that the pixels line up in the background. It's a great concept. I would love to see you try to get it full frame and not cropped. Let me just see, any of these say cropped? Let's see, not a mistake. I have a series of similar images spanning a couple years. This one happened to be one of the best. Yeah, I just, there's, if it's not cropped, which would be awesome if it wasn't, it's just something about the processing in the background that's throwing it off because it looks, it just looks too fake in the background, too pixelated. It shouldn't, the bokeh doesn't look right in the background. That's just what I'm seeing right there. Let's see, what do we have here? That's a cool shot. Obviously, it looks like a head ball guy going in. I need to not say obviously so often, but it's a nice shot from behind the net. It's a nice sports image. Uh, somebody falling off the equestrian thing. Don't like it so much, personally. Big, big watermark. It's fine, but I, it, it doesn't do much for me. Personally, it doesn't do much for me. What is this? You call this sports? I get, I, yeah, they're jumping from there. It's hard... You know, black and white would do this justice because I don't think the color does anything in it. But I'll obviously, I had to look. 
up here and try to see what was going on here. I guess this is parkour. I don't know if he's – nah, he looks like he's just jumping across. It's okay. I mean, it shows the, it shows what's going on, so it's better than okay because it shows more of the scene and the situation. Uh, so that, that's not bad. This is great. Love the editing. The editing is what makes it. Beautiful black and white going on here. Nice job, Pablo. This is great. Love thick, contrasty black and whites just like this. One thing I could say is possibly get down on a lower angle. I know the water is there, but that way you would cut out these poles in the background and make these runners and swimmers look even larger. Black and white uh, cropped. Beautiful, tight focus on the subject here as the water is... is careening around. Now it is cropped in a, in a horizontally looking thing that isn't aspect ratioed, but that's fine if that's the vision that you saw. But this is really nice capture right there. One of my favorites that I saw here was this one. I just, I just love the trees. The trees are what make it. The trees make this image. So going this way, you know, I'd love to see this as a high contrast black and white as well. That's nice. Eh, that's okay. This is all right, too. Um, That's another biking one. I mean, yeah, th this shows you the rain. Very nice job with that. Isolated off to the side is nice. Truck in the background, pretty distracting. Follow car, pretty distracting. Um, but has the lights there. So maybe it's part of the race, and it looks good. So we've got this person punching the bag. Highly stylized edit. Some people like edits like this. Some people don't. It's extremely stylized. Um, I don't dislike it. I like all the stuff that's captured here. It's just, it's so over the top. But uh, sometimes what I've noticed is that a lot of the commercial type people that are looking for images are looking for something overhyped like this and done over the top. Whenever you look at Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul, all those photos, highly touched up, highly touched up just to give it that some kind of look. So that's exactly what we have going on here. I just wish there was a different look on the face, not so dead. All right, skipping, skipping. Purple's my favorite color. This isn't in focus. It's not in focus. I, yes, I, I get that sometimes motion is part of it, but no, th this guy, th I want these people to be sharp. I really want them to be sharp, so I'm not a fan of that. That's cool. It's a cool action shot of the guy coming over the top. Not a big super fan of that one. Good soccer shot. See, this is the way that I, I want to showcase more of your stuff so that's why I'm going to try to blow through some of these quicker. I like this. I like this a lot. You got the horse that the guy, I don't know anything about rodeo or, or wrangling or calf tackling. If this is a calf tackling, well, oh boy, I'm going to go calf tackling. I'll get myself a calf. I'm going to hog tie that thing. Mm, yeah. Anyway, uh, horse is still running. People watching in the background. The guy getting ready to tackle the thingy mabobber, a.k.a. a calf or a bull or a, something with horns. This is, this is good. This is good. I love it. I'd like to love it in black and white too. I think that highly stylized, not over stylized black and white, like we saw up above in, in the uh, the people running into the water shot. I think that could be great here, but this is this looks like it was done during golden hour. It's a great shot, really like it. Either way, it's a great shot. This is a cage fight, very difficult to shoot through the cage. It's okay, it's a nice action shot. Goalie warming up on the ice. You know, it's just, it's a warm up shot. That's cool. This is tough, though. It's tough because you, you've isolated the guy. You've frozen the guy up here. I, I was watching... My foot keeps getting stuck under the table. I was watching the Neil Lifer documentary, The Keepers of the, of the Streak, and that's the one about the, uh, the, the people that have shot every single Super Bowl game up to this point, and there was something that they talked about in the old days when they were able to get more of those environment shots, wider angle shots that show more of what was going on, like the, because they used to play during the day. The game wouldn't end. It would end before nighttime. Just that's how they played it. And they had these epic shots, tremendous shots, that were in there that showed the environment and showed more of what was going on than just isolating the subject. And to me, I feel that the the isolation shots are okay for some things, but when you could tell the story of what's going on, for example, in this photo, if you could show the jump and you could show the distance that the guy is going, maybe, and the people watching, maybe it could be more impressive. Now, it's not a bad shot. It's a great shot that's captured there, but it's not, I, you know, I'd like to see the story. Let's see, Andre. I, and we have to keep this to a certain limit of time, so I just, we're 10 minutes in, holy God. I'm gonna keep going through. This is nice. Mm. 
Mm. You got to tighten up the exposure. You got, you got. Anytime you get this glowy McGloerson around the guy, it means the editing is overdone, Mike. Um, it's a great capture, but actually, I think it's focused on this guy back here and not actually focused here. Too much being done to the face, uh, trying to bring that back, dodging it just doesn't work so well. But it's a great capture. Just work on the editing. What is going on here? I just wish the feet weren't cut off down here at the bottom, and it would be even better. Not so much, not so much, just a basic shot. Don't cut the feet off, get down on a lower angle. That's the critique here. If you got all this fog on the field, get down on a low angle, get down on it, get down on that low angle, and then go black and white because the color is not very good in here. All right, all right. I like shots like this, but the crops throw me off. I want to see the rest of, the, of what's going on. I like this shot too. It, and it, you see, this is what we're talking about, more of that environment. You, now you get the countryside that's going on here. Cycling, spring road race, yeah, that's what's up. That's what I'm talking about. That gives you the wider shot. Get all the feet in on this one. Fencing, I really want to be a fencer. I like this, it has multiple subjects in it. How can you not like this? How can you not like tip-offs? Look at that, the, the, the ref throwing the ball up, these two guys jumping, and bam! Right in their face. Yeah, it, Nicholas, it, has, it probably is a remote camera. Then again, I'm wrong. Camera in hand, laying on my belly in the rafters of the stadium. Well, that's freaking awesome. Do you see the difference between a, a good shot and a shot that goes bam, bam, pal, smack? Something, and yeah, somebody's going to yell at me for saying that. But do you see the difference? The great shots just stand out and ca capture your eye. The not-so-good shots, there's those, but I'm trying to give critiques to make them even better. Now, this is a tremendous shot, really awesome. I uh, think we need to do some tweaking with the editing, though. It's a little over yellow on this screen that I'm on. Taping up the hockey stick, good environmental portrait shot. Uh, that's a very nice moment captured, spinning back house, roundhouse, back kick from main event. Very nice, nice job right there. That's not bad, that's, I'm not into auto racing myself, but that doesn't mean, Field of Dreams? Oh, see, I got Field of Dreams out of this. You build it and he will come. So nice moment capture that. See? You see what I'm talking about? This is what, oh, this is in Pittsburgh, right? Because that's, that's the Pittsburgh, that, that guy who's really fast and hits the ball and nobody's in the stands. You see what we're talking about? Wide shots. The wide environmental shots tell an amazing story. If this was just a tight picture of him, it's boring. It's blah. It's blasé. But when you get a shot like this that shows the stadium in the background and shows what's going to tell a story, it boom, boom, pow, pop, pam, spam. Nice job. I just, I got to keep going through some of these. Now, this is the greatest Neil Leifer photo of all time. Um, I'm not sure why this guy posted this shot, being that it's not his. Uh, and I asked for people's best photos ever. This is Neil Leifer's best photo. He didn't post it here. This is nice. Black and white serves this very well. Still think it's... It looks like a flash is being used, but the, the, the sky must have been much dark. It just looks fake. Uh, the sky is too pixelated. It shouldn't be that pixelated. Nice environment. Nice shot going on there. See, this works. It's tighter, but you have all this stuff going on in the background. That works as well. Not so much, don't like that, don't like this, not very much interest in, in the action. Um, I'm not even going to comment on that diving photo from, for a couple of reasons. Um, that's cool, diving in for the rugby score, I think, rugby. I'd like to see it wider because I'd like to see the guys going after him. I'd like to see him in full laid out away from this pole. It is cropped. I can, it really looks like it is. Um, again, not complaining that it's cropped. All right. Show this a little wider. I'd like to see the background and I'd like to see what's going on. Again, I guess I'm on that wide kick right now talking about wider shots. Sidney Crosby, that's a nice shot though. Um, it's a nice shot because you got the guy chasing him. Nice low angle, nice exposure, very sharp, very nice. Pump the contrast just a little bit. It's going to tighten up the blacks. Um, screw Sidney Crosby while we're at it. Still one of the best players ever to play the game. See, wider shot, you get the guy going into second for the double play, getting ready. I think he was getting punched out. This is ultra, ultra wide. Um, very, not, they're not gonna get a lot of shots out of that, but that's, it's okay. That's all right. I'm just gonna keep going. I must have gone through, oh, volleyball girls. Undefeated this season. They all ran together and started jumping. So let's see, they're all jumping at the same time. Is it sharp? It's, it's, it's not really sharp. Um, 
it's a great capture, but it has to be a little bit sharper. Nice job with uh, multiple exposures going on there. I like this with the background of Chicago. See, I know it's Chicago, and it makes it adds interest. Like these guys are like, "Whoa, what's he gonna do?" And then you got this, and you got the city in the background. I like that. All right, I'll just keep going through. The link is down below. Uh, see, this is kind of interesting. The fog game. It's 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 nice, but it's not tight enough. Not in terms of, I'm not telling you to shoot it tighter. I'm just saying I want to see more. If the fog was there, then let's get that wide shot showing all of the fog going on. Paddle boarding, hockey, pucks in the glove. And I should probably wrap it up, but the link is down. Oh, that's good. This is, this is great. That's Tough Mudder. That's called getting down low, get low, get, this is great. Everything, this stuff out of focus. But you see it's wide. If it was just a tight shot of this guy in the mud, it loses all interest. But the fact that it has the mud and the barbed wire and the wood and the person in the background gives it the interest. It tells the story. Yeah, that's fine. It's a tight shot, but it just goes, it's kind of like my tight shot at the very top of the, of the goalie. It's okay, it's good, but it doesn't give you a lot of interest, but I still love the shot. Uh, great action. What a great swing. She's about to roll the wrist over. Really nice form. You got the straight line put up right through the leg right here. Really nice hip rotation. Very nice shot right there. And good swing on the girl, too. We'll go through a couple more. I keep saying that, but you guys can go through this. How far down? Oh, my God. Look at this. It keeps going, and I almost went past something that looked pretty good. That's cool. Nice little shot there. Nice setup going on. Mm, too tight. I mean, that's fine. It's a bendy stick. It's too yeah. Wide shot. Hey yeah yeah that what well, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That looks good. Yeah. See, you know, you know how we had the the trampoline up up high in the first shot. Now we've got context. This is where it works. She's doing a a double cow mow back turn from Ohio State University and you have the camel horse pommel horse camel ball uh, duh. what do they call that thing they call that thing the they call this the balance beam it's only three inches wide or something so that's cool that's cool because you got the you got the you got the story going on that's what I'm talking about wider yeah so there's some really good shots as we go down low here I just wish I could go through more but look at this we just have to scroll through there's so many shots, and I want to talk about every one, but I gotta limit this to just, I gotta limit it. There's some really good things in here. This one's insane. I'd like this, again, too tight, but this is where they do that Red Bull skating thing. That is insane. Look at this. Look at all these photos, guys. Go look at them, find the ones you like, put, the, you know, follow the photographer, see the work that they, look how thin these girls are. Like, Way too thin. Whoa. Yeah, lots of photos. I I'm going to have to stop because if I don't stop, I'm going to keep going and going and going. Lots of really fantastic shots going on in there. Uh, really nice job by you guys. Thank you for posting them on Facebook. I'm going to keep giving you more assignments to post your best images on a different topic and assignment up there from time to time. Now, remember, it takes me some time to go through this. There's 1,600 images that came in here. I can't go through them all. I don't have the time to do it. I just wanted to pinpoint some of the ones that I saw, give some critiques, give some pointers, and go from there. I think the moral of the story for this sports discussion and the sports photos is, yes, you want to capture the emotion, but you want to capture the scene while you're at it. The scene is extremely important, and some people did a great job. Go back to this page. The link is below. Go look at these images. Look at them. Follow the people that took them, and go from there, and, uh, and just look for the next videos to come out. So that's where I'll leave it. Don't forget the shirt. Green shirt's in stock right now in the store, store.fronosphoto.com. Don't forget to like me on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, and that's where I'm going to leave it. Jared Poland, froknosphoto.com. See ya.